Good morning everyone. I hope everyone is uh, having fun and doing well and staying safe. Forgive me uh, my voice. Um, I've had a tooth out and um, had a few issues after that. Um, so if I'm speaking slow um, and slightly slurred, I'm not drunk. Um, I'm just having an issue with my jaw. Now I'm going to try and get two videos out before my meds kick in because after that point um, all bets are off. So this video is entitled Magnetic Field Interaction with Aluminium. Some of the effects are not just limited to aluminium. Um, as we know not only aluminium but copper and other conductive materials produce a lens field when they come into contact with an alternating or moving magnetic field. So what I want to demonstrate here is the main issue that people are completely ignoring when they are building their devices. Now on here we have a two-dimensional representation of a, th a three-dimensional setup. Uh, simple reason being no way that I can demonstrate a three-dimensional setup uh, without do going to extreme lengths of my time to set up uh, 3D models on the computer. So, um, let's just take a look at it in two dimensions, but bear in mind that we're working in three. Well, actually, no. We need to work in another dimension. Uh, I call it the fourth dimension. Um, some people call it the fifth dimension. Um, it's completely irrelevant which dimension you call it as long as we refer to it, it as the same thing. I am of course talking about time. Now we all know that when you energize an electromagnetic coil it takes time for the field to fully energize. So as it's coming up to full strength it's gradually increasing. Uh, we know this, rules of inductance, um, Ohm's law, etc, etc. Um, they all contribute together to um, give you a rough idea of the time it takes for this field to form. Now, if you alternate the field, as in um, you supply the drive with an AC signal, so it's an alternating current signal, uh, the field alternates between north and south at one end. North, south, north, south. Um, if you get the frequency fast enough, as soon as it hits full density on the north side, it starts reducing it back down to energize it to the south field. Now, if you use um, um, sort of square wave signals um, you can get a very fast frequency for it. Now these frequencies have different effects dependent upon the wavelength. So here I'm going to show just a handful of scenarios, three of them, um, in which the magnetic field can interact with aluminium. There are other scenarios and other effects that I'm not going to cover for the simple reason being that it would be nigh on impossible to show you without doing 3D models. So, on this sheet Yes, I've had to uh, print this off because my uh, my compass went missing. I suppose my niece has had it. 
or nephew, I suppose. But I'll find it again. Just wait till I see him this weekend. Anyway, um, it's not exact um, the way a magnetic field would propagate, but assuming that these curve lines are a slow representation of an alternating magnetic field. Assume that each solid line is the north peak and halfway between them is the south peak. Okay. Frequency. If the frequency is low enough then the majority of the field Try and draw this. We'll just pass straight through. I say majority. There is a slight reduction. Okay, simple enough. Um, there's a slight, as I said, there's a slight reduction in field strength. There is a slight divergence that's that happens. Uh, but the percentage of which depends on the thickness of the aluminium which is this thing against the frequency that uh, you're sending at it now the strength itself the peak strengths also have a bearing on how much distortion you get in the um, should we say signal strength, uh, signal integrity of the magnetic field. Um, so obviously if, uh, if you're intending on shoving gigawatts of uh, magnetic field through an aluminium plate, it's going to play havoc. Whereas if you just want to point one of a watt, it's probably not going to do bugger at all. So, that's one effect at low frequency. As I said, it's not the be-all and end-all. There are other effects that can happen. At... Um, at a medium frequency, now I just realise the f what we define as low, medium, and high frequencies is dependent on a rough load of factors: um, um, atmospheric density for one, um, the whole setup of the drive coil for two, the thickness of the aluminium for three. Um, the quality of the aluminium for four, um, the distance the aluminium is from the coil for another, and so on and so forth. So, there is no way that I could define specific frequency ranges for an experiment that you guys might set up to test this. Um, well, I wouldn't say theory, but explanation. Right, so you just have to set up something like a triple five timer to go through different frequencies and see their effects. Devise an experiment to do it. Right, at a medium frequency, what you get, if I draw the little edges here now, instead of it going through you get another effect right, which is basically the lens effect you get oops yes I sharpened my pencil wish I hadn't now you get little lens bubbles that form on the surface of the aluminium. 
medium frequencies there like you get the idea they're just they just disrupt the inbound magnetic signal which can be useful okay so they just produce uh, a very rapid alternating field that's um, if I had to give you an example uh, approximately twice the frequency of the wave that you originally start with approximately again that is dependent on many factors air density quality of the aluminium, thickness of the aluminium, you get it, and so on and so forth. Hence why this cannot be done um, fully unless it's in a computer, which takes an awfully long time. Now, if um, well, an application for this, right, which people may wish to consider right, is to put air coils on the face of this aluminium. If you get the right uh, geometry of the coils it will act as one hell of a generator. Just be aware of the frequencies that are going to be involved and therefore how you rectify the power. Once you pick the frequency up, you get a different effect that can start happening. <coughs> the, um, the lens fields that are produced on the surface of the aluminium uh, start interacting with the inbound fields from the drive coil. Right. So you get an interaction. Eventually, they come into sync with each other. And when I say sync, I mean sync. We know that a lens field is equal to and opposite uh, the field that creates it. So in this case here, when the north peak hits the aluminium sheet it creates a peak south pe field that bounces back which then interacts because of the delay in lens interacts with the inbound south peak that's between them right? and thus you will end up with a repulsion because the two south peaks will, and they'll bounce off each other so what you get, if I can draw this, is something that looks a bit like that. So the inbound field interacts with its predecessor and produces a repulsion. At the same time, however, if the distance between the aluminium and the drive coil changes because of the repulsion, it will also become out of sync so that the lens south field no longer interacts with the peak south field. Instead, it interacts with the peak north field and thus creates an attraction. So what happens is it wants to keep the object and the distance between these two the same. It fights any movement once you get it to the right point. There's many examples of this on the net. I myself have pointed one with um, um, levitating aluminium I think it's called uh, take a look at that um, there are other examples of levitating aluminium um, 
so take a look it's all there it all comes down to the frequency and of course the, to a certain point the strength of the field that you're using excuse me so just to quickly recap um, the field from your drive coil is not a static field when you energize the coil the field builds up when you de-energize it the field will collapse yes I know it's kind of obvious however the speed at which these two expand and collapse dependent upon your setup how well you've done the coil the frequency in which it operates determines how the magnetic field that is being radiated out from the coil that interacts with other objects those of us that have been doing free energy experiments for several years will notice that when running a coil continuously other objects around it even two or three meters away become magnetized that is because of the EM radiation that is being put out this has been mentioned in another post um, I can't remember where it was that I've seen it off the top of my head um, I too have mentioned it years ago um, so you may want to for those that know how to I should say uh, may want to get an analogue um, a Hall effect sensor hook it up to a multimeter and start waving it around and seeing if you can pick up the EM radiation uh, you might do, you might not do um, it could be that um, because of the frequencies coming off it may well be that the multimeter can't pick it up fast enough but you can always have a play so hopefully someone finds this interesting hopefully someone can use this information and create something that hasn't been created before and then we can progress forwards All right. any questions as always give me a shout um, I will talk to you probably in a few minutes for the next video bye for now